My name is Carla. <laughs> Welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, on this channel, we talk about spirituality, energy, plant medicine, sacred medicines, all kinds of cool stuff. Every once in a while, aliens and stuff like that too. <laughs> so um, today, so this is another, uh, another interview slash conversation um, part of my little series that I'm doing. Um, which involves the people that I think are like the most awesome people in the whole world um, that I'm just interviewing here uh, each week. And so this week is who I consider sort of like my little brother, one of my little brothers anyway, uh, Soul Fam, um, Hector, and, um, and Megan, which you've seen last week, if you tuned in to the interview with Megan, hopefully you did. And if you didn't, then go back and look at hers because she is all about all kinds of beautiful things. And that was last week. So, um, so today what the conversation really is gonna be on is the sacred toad medicine, Bofu, uh, Bufo, <laughs> sorry. Um, I get, I get like dis, I get like all whatever because my cat's looking at me crazy and like, I'm like, what are you about to do? Like jump on me or right. something? <laughs> um, but what, what is Bufo? What is, you know, what is it? Um, like what is the consciousness of the medicine? You know, what th does it help with? What does it help with? You know, who can and can't, um, take it? Um, it's really just all about the medicine and our experiences. And, um, and one thing that I really like, my, that I really wanted Hector to talk about was this like magical synchronicity of, well, let me go back. So I, I met Hector um, through, a, through a couple of ceremonies uh, a couple of years ago. And, and it seemed like, seemed like you're, you were kind of like at a crossroad. Like it was like, uh, might do this business, might do that. I don't know. Then fell in love with Bufo. Um, and then all of a sudden these synchronicities within like a year, like took him to this place, like this magical island um, in Mexico. Yeah. And so that's just a beautiful manifestation. And it's truly man, that's just like the universe just just telling you, yes, yes, I support this. <laughs> yeah. so, that's exactly true. So I really, so I'm, I really wanted you to start off kind of like, um, first of all, what, what is Bufo? Okay, well, Bufo is a medicine. It is a plant medicine, um, well, animal medicine to be specific. Um, there are a bunch of them, um, a bunch of different medicines, so to say. But Bufo is uh, a really powerful one. It comes from the poison um, or secretion from the Northern Sonora Desert Toad. Um, it's a cane toad, it's really big. It's the biggest breed of toad. <laughs> and it uh, comes out of the ground for three, four months out of the year during the monsoon season. And it's underground for nine months. Um, it comes from the, the region of the Sonora Desert, and just north of it in Arizona and Nevada and South Nevada and things. But it's really only there in that part of the world. Um, and it's their, their secretion that um, is used to help you connect with uh, source consciousness or creator or God. Um, yeah, I guess that's what it is and what it's been used for <laughs> for a long time. Um, and it's 5-MeO-DMT. Right. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. That's five MEO DMT. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So the story of how you met your teacher. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good one. It's uh, all led by spirit, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I have. Uh, yeah, Bufo changed my life um, a few years back. Um, for a, a, quite a long time, I hadn't been walking straight. I'd been using drugs on and off and alcohol and smoking cigarettes and things and, and just being working a life uh, that I didn't want to be in. And um, I was taken to a sacred ceremony and uh, where I sat with Bufo for the first time and um, it completely changed my life. Um, 
yeah, I stopped using uh, some of the things I was using at the time and really started to straighten my life around. And um, about six or seven Bufo ceremonies in over the course of uh, about six or seven months, um, I actually sat with uh, peyote and a grandfather in, in a meeting. And um, that, that medicine, I was praying. That's when I was at a crossroads in my life and I was praying for direction. And um, I was told by the fire and I guess higher consciousness or whatever you want to call it, source, spirit, that I should walk a medicine path. So I began walking a medicine path as a result of grandfather in the peyote meeting. But I knew that Bufo was my medicine because it, it, it's the only thing that's ever straightened me up and, and helped me, you know, walk closer with God and realize the things, you know, that I really need to work on and change for myself to be a better person. So um, I didn't know what Bufo or like if there was a tradition behind Bufo, because um, the person and, and the way that I had uh, learned when I first started getting into the medicine was, you know, you just take medicine, you say a prayer, it's done in a sacred way, you cleanse and stuff. And, um, you know, I, you take the medicine, you just lay down and, and the, the, there, the, the shaman there, um, but, you know, puts on music and, you know, is there for you and, and helps you out through that process. And um, I wanted to learn how to do it. Um, I knew that I felt a calling on my life to to work with this medicine and to help other people the way that it helped me. You know, um, I believe that if I would have found this medicine a, a while back in my life, um, it would be different in a better way. Um, yeah, this it, this medicine is a blessing. It's just it's love and it's life. And um, yeah, I knew that I wanted to devote my life to it. So it took me a couple of years. I really couldn't find a teacher. Um, I was serving medicine for a while. Um, you know, going, I, I, you know, worked with the medicine quite a bit there for a long time by myself. And I just put myself, you know, through every aspect of the process. And I thought that was the way to do it. Um, and it's, um, one way, but it's not, you know, the best way in my opinion anymore. Um, I wouldn't, I couldn't really quite find a teacher. I, I, I reached out to quite a few people, some prominent, prominent Bufo practitioners in the space. And, you know, I just wasn't really, couldn't find any, anywhere to go or any programs or anyone willing to mentor or teach me. So I ended up, um, this is, I ended up in Mexico and I went down there to visit a toad sanctuary that um, some very good brothers of mine operate there. Um, yeah, I went to go visit and spend time and collect medicine myself, um, for the first time. So I went down there and, um, they told me that they knew the SETIs that the elders of the SETI tribe in the Comcac community in Mexico, um, which are one of the two tribes where this medicine comes from, um, and that they could get me a ceremony there. And I was like, you know, yeah, I mean, let's go. So we, uh, we went over there and I, and I sat with the medicine with Luis, he's one of the shamans there of the, of the, of the Comcac. And, uh, I'd been working with medicine for a long time for a couple of years at that point. And, um, when he served me medicine there and it's used in the traditional context that, that he does it in, it just was quite profound. It was a lot different. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I went through ceremony and I just started crying and, you know, just humbleness. And it's like, man, this is really crazy. You know, I finally, you know, I got down here. I've been he hearing stories about the SETIs and, and, you know, about the sacred island there and how that's where a lot of people, prominent people that have taken Bufo um, have gone and have worked with. Um, so, yeah. Um, I don't know what happened or why, but, Luis, after when I was in ceremony, he, he told me to look at the sun and um, he started singing and he put his hand over my eyes um, and um, he started singing and he asked me what I saw. And I was like, you know what, man, I really you see. He said, do you see my face? Do you see any animals? Do you see anything at all? I said, I don't I don't really see any. I don't see shit, man. Because I just see a little a little light and, you know, you know, like orange and blue and pink coming out of it. And that's that's about it. And um and said okay and then he translated to the the translator there because i don't speak spanish and uh you know he said hey that's that's the portal you know that's that's what we see that's the biggest portal that we know and um he wants to know if you want to come back and work with him a little bit more and learn a little bit more and uh i did i i did um and it's been quite an experience since yeah, yeah that's uh, a lot 
you know, it's a lot, but I tried to sum it down. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know you shortened it a little bit. That's good. Um, yeah. And I know that Megan, that's where you met her, right? Didn't y'all was... that? We met online. It's... Oh, okay. <laughs> was at... but, um... I... Oh, go ahead, babe. I was down there. I was I was down there working with them, and I, I was working with the water and making posts and stuff, and she reached out to me and said that she liked the work that I was doing there, and um, she said that she was watching me, so I said, I've been watching you, too, and it's just <laughs> it's been game over since then. <laughs> I just, yeah. like, complimented, uh, work, but I had actually gone through one of my own first ceremonies myself, and it really had... I had like a full like death and rebirth, like something that takes some people a while with that medicine to achieve and was really like in a, a self love and just loving myself and unconditionally and really like honed in on that. So I like truly like meant it. I was like, I love the work you're doing and stuff. But like, we always like joke around because like, you know, he asked if I was single and I said, no, like, even though I was just because it's like, I was in a relationship with myself at the time. Yes. You know? So he's like, you lied to me. I, I like when I felt like I had had like a good amount of like integration from that ceremony. And I was like, Hey, you know, I was like, not forthcoming about this one thing yeah. <laughs> like, like the fact that i'm single <laughs> <laughs> too cute y'all make such a beautiful couple thanks um, thank you yeah okay there's so many different little things that i that i wanted to oh um megan how you said see that my experiences with with the medicine have been just completely and utterly nothing but the energy of unconditional love. Like yes. there, 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 there has never been like, like I've seen all these videos on YouTube where it's like the people are shaking and doing all this. And I'm like, I've just never, I don't, I don't know if maybe what's wrong, if there's something wrong or whatever, but. Um, not necessarily, I think, and Hector can probably speak to this as well, but I think there's very, <laughs> actually no connection between what your physical vessel is doing and what you're experiencing like in the divine some people thrash around and they they say they had the same experience that you did there's really not too much of a relationship there that's just like where a facilitator comes in because it's that connection isn't there like they're they're there to keep you your body and your vessel safe while you're on your journey you know what it is? Maybe when that happens, maybe they're fighting it. Maybe they're fighting it. I would highly agree. And I think Hector would too. Do you want to add anything? I mean, I know that when I, um, I fight things and I have a constant battle of like controlling the space and I, I just, I have to like, I end up moving a lot, like with really like any ceremonial setting, I like I feel like I need to move. And I think that some of that is like a, a resistance by the ego, by the, the perceived self, you yeah. know, um, Hector, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, it's, uh, I think it has a lot to do with the fear of fear of death in some people, you know, that's, yeah. that's really what, Bu what, what Bufo is, is, uh, it, it create, it creates a connection with source consciousness and it literally shuts down your brain and, um, it can be, the most beautiful thing in the world it's all love it's you know that's where we come from and sometimes it can be really scary getting to that point um you know and yeah i've seen a lot of people um, thrash around and, and really fight that and fight letting go and just like hey letting your consciousness go to the other side for a little bit because it can feel like you're dying um yeah. but not all, not all the time um yeah Oh, just, sorry, I got a call. Okay. Well, also, I just wanted to add the, um, I think, fear in the actual medicine itself. You know, if it was not sourced oh, yeah. in an ethical way, if it's tinged with blood or something, that certainly will translate <laughs> to your experience. So that's another thing to be careful for, you know, it's like, and that's, Hmm. you know sad because it's you know like a fad with some people and it's really like you have to know where it's coming from you have to care you know I think that um having a 
preparing for that is important, having a clear intent, um, putting some disciplines in place before you partake with something, doing the hard part, you know, and not seeking it for some instant gratification yeah. within your, this will heal me. And then like after this, you know, I'll be spiritual or something. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, doing a lot of like inner work and clear intention. And I think, so it's just a multitude of factors, I think that contribute to people's experiences and how much resistance is at play. So, That's true. So, so let me ask you this. Do you think, do y'all think that someone this is my this has been like a major question for me like should someone have already like been through like therapy like 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 should should this be something that you go to after you're already sort of um aware and sort of like awoken you know what i'm saying like okay like knows about the you know you're not the thoughts and you're not the mind and the body and all that or 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 is it also for people that are still stuck in the in the in the real world i shouldn't say that in the seemingly real world um do you think it's like, okay? yeah i see that's a good question um my take on it would be that that's tough. I think if you are in a, in a spot where you are aware, then you do have a responsibility to have clear intention if you have that awareness. However, sometimes the toad has a way of calling to people who are at their rock bottom and it's really almost going to be like that light switch for mm -hmm. them to snap out of those patterns, those subliminal patterns that they're just looped and stuck in, you know, in the grips of addiction or something. And while of course it should definitely be done like safely and all of that, I think that it serves its purpose there too. It's just really the intention and the mindset. If they're at the point where this is just the crippling addiction, like I'll never get out of this, you know, I'm better off dead, something like that. It really can switch that for them. Um, so I don't know. It's, that's my take on it. It's kind of a case by case basis. So um, they just have to kind of be at that point where they're like, I will try like anything to break this, what's happening up here. I'll do anything and, and sort of surrender at least the fear. They may not have the awareness of, you know, everything that you're talking about, but at least at, when you hit the actual rock bottom, there's almost a surrender of fear. You're like there's really nothing I wouldn't do to not feel this way anymore. If that makes sense. That's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. yeah, that's that's what happened to me. I hit rock bottom. I had no other choice. Wow. Hector's a good example. That's yeah. good. You know, it's like I feel like just just because I started this whole the, this path after you know years of therapy, living inside a substance abuse facility for two years, and all this stuff. It's like I feel like I was so I had dealt with all that stuff, so I feel like it was easier for me to do all of this, all of this. But right. So I so I I really um, yeah. So, so I really wanted to know that. Yeah. Another the addictive stuff, real quick. Just like while we we're on the subject. Um, because I know that that was like something that maybe you were going to bring up later. So I apologize if you were, but it, like in terms of like, what are some of like the benefits of working with this medicine? One of the clearly delineated ones is it's like efficacy, it's reported efficacy with people who struggle with addiction disorders. Um, so there's, I've actually was just recently, I was just talking to Hector about this. I read about, there's like some treatment facilities that will use 5-MeO-DMT in addition to amplify the benefits of um, the anti-addictive properties of Iboga. So they will use those in combination for like rehab, rehabilitative, like inpatient type stuff. This is like in a facility under care and stuff. But there's, um, there's some evidence that it um, it can reduce the number of receptors. I think if it's like the MGLUR5, it's one of the receptors responsible for addiction and it can reduce the number of those. So um, 
I would like to, I'll put the link to that maybe in the comments or something in case one, someone wants to read up on it. And then obviously like the very obvious depression and anxiety, having, you know, a mystical or whatever you want to call it experience like that. It's, um, I mean, it's powerful. There's a lot of rewiring that happens. Well, that's what I was going to talk ask next. Um, let's just say that I have a friend, know someone that is young, not not a minor, 19, 20, um, that has like crippling anxiety, crippling, and and it's really all and it's really all about worried about what people are going to think of me. What, it's really a bunch of like sort of ego stuff to me. I don't, I don't know. Maybe there's some uh, chemical imbalance or what, I don't know really, but it's crippling, crippling. Okay. Um, someone young like that, that like, isn't like the prefrontal cortex, not fully developed and all that, like, would that, would it be okay? Do you think now we're not, none of us are, you know, doctors, um, mental health doctors. So this is just our opinions. So, you know, but um, I mean, what do y'all think about that? Someone young like that? I think from, you have to look at that from like a physical standpoint and also an energetic standpoint. An energetic standpoint, that's easy to answer because it sounds like this person is just like placing her worth in external validations. Um, and it's a fear vibration and what Bufo is offering is the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. It's the, the yin to the yang. <laughs> it is love is, vibration is so much higher than fear vibration. So there's no doubt about like just the benefits that would provide from a physical standpoint. I think it's, it's just with, um, you know, limited sacred use, perhaps one time would be would be good for now like you said i mean if they're 19 you know they're not a minor and stuff you know taking into account about like the prefrontal i don't think you can produce like indigenous dmt some like through like somatic breath work and stuff and they don't like i don't i don't commonly hear like you know don't do this breath work routine to, like your age yeah exactly <laughs> so i like of course just want to preface that again by saying like that's just my opinion. Yeah. Hector, you know. Yeah. When uh, I think it's I think it's all right. Um, as far as the traditional use goes, when down there in the tribe, when when they're 13 years old, the male and the females, they'll they'll go through a, a ceremony, their first ceremony with the toad. Now I don't I don't know if they work with it all the time or what, but um yeah, that's that's what they do down there. Um <clears throat> Yeah, these these are they are medicines and they do help, but I don't I don't think they would hinder the brain function in any way if used, you know, once or twice ceremoniously, you know, before the age of twenty five. With with like appropriate dose of dosing. Yeah. Um, yep. You know they, like even you know I've seen you know down in Mexico they 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 take kind of like the size of you into like account too just from that makes like. Sense. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not about the amount of medicine. It's about very small. It's just the spirit of it and just very small That's amount it. of medicine can your get breath. the job done. Yeah, your mm -hmm. breath, like a lot of it is really relies on the participant because you can put some like yep. whopping dose in there for me. But, it, you know, if I'm still in like my fight or flight, just like kind of like fast breathing, it's not going to feel like much of an experience because I'm not like distributing that. Exactly. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, this is some good stuff. This is some good information. Um, the consciousness. So, so the toad. So there's glands on the toad's back or neck, right? That you press and it comes out. Yeah. Also, two on the two on the front legs, two on the back legs. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Yep. yep there's six glands. And it's just yeah. amazing how that makes that like how, and it's and it's literally it takes it takes nine months in darkness to, to to make that medicine to bring that light to the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they stay down there for nine months. Yeah, they they eat mostly ants, ants and roaches. 
They yeah. stay under the sand. The yeah, they live. They live underground for for nine months in the darkness, and then they harbor that medicine, and their body makes it. And when they come up, their their glands are full. I love that, like just the analogy of that, though that they had, like they they also have to go through darkness before yeah. using something like that, and it really helps you remember to like use the medicine reverently, you know, and only when needed. It took so much. Oh. It does. It takes a long time, a lot of work. Yeah, that medicine's sacred. Yeah, and um. Uh, gosh what, what how would you i guess describe an experience like um really like like i know it's hard to put in words like my like i said just unconditional love it just it's it's just it's just absolutely everything else is forgotten about there's no who I think I am and all that stuff. None of that matters. It's just absolute unconditional love from every, coming from everywhere. Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess my, the, the closest way that I could describe it is, um, you know, being in heaven or, um, uh, yeah being in heaven i guess because that's you know there is no body it's nothing but soul it's nothing but consciousness and you're not aware really of what's going on or what's happening uh sometimes you are but not not if you're connected with source 100 percent. you know you're just you're not here in this body um, it's really beautiful and i guess you know it's just a uh, like you said an overwhelming sense of just love because that's what you know that's what christ and that's what the light is it's, it's love it's nothing but creation and love um, yeah, it's, that's, I mean, that's the best as we can describe it is, is taking time to go back to heaven. It's, it's the way that I see it. And, and it's just an energy. It's just an energy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. Source energy. I mean, for me, there's a lot of like, sort of like sacred geometry, but again, that's just kind of representing like consciousness. It's like what my view our experience is of what god is yeah. um and it's just connecting you with what you perceive to be divinity but then the cool part is it reminds you that like you are a part of that that's not something that you're thinking of you are included in that as well um i've had an experience like looking at the sun where i could see the portal very clearly and it was like i saw it was kind of visually describe it as almost like gold specks sort of permeating out oscillating 360 however i knew somehow <laughs> again it's hard to like put some of this into words i knew that it would rec represented every death and reincarnation simultaneously happening all at once i could see for every out there was an in and it was just looping of creation and um just naturally witnessing that there's like a humility that comes in an acceptance with death because it's like well you know i have to be part of that i have to experience that to you know to just tr this constant transfer ebb and flow of love source consciousness energy <laughs> so yeah see the visuals um to me in my experience is just um, it's just white. It's just light, um, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and and yeah, some some geometric shapes, but not very much for me. Just lots and lots of light. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's you know because a lot of people would think anything with DMT, you know, if it's by itself or five meo DMT would be all these visuals, which it it is a lot of visuals on DMT, but with this, it's more of just this energetic blast of, of, of love and, and just a little bit, uh, you know, a visual. Yeah. We're running out of time. Oh, no. It says we're running out of time. We've removed the 40 minute time limit off your group. Oh, good. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. Nice. That's I awesome. Recording. I think that might have to do yeah. with um, just the fact that you're like, when you smoke DMT, yes, obviously your 
in your body and stuff, but you're kind of using this vessel, right? To interpret your experience. The UFO, you know, the difference is you leave, you do truly leave and have an experience elsewhere. So I think that maybe you're my, this is just my take on it. Like, mm -hmm. um, you're not inhibited by the constraints of this vessel. You get to experience source energy and you're part of that as well. And you're not stuck behind like, oh yeah, like, you know, my, my fingers the are aliens just, and like, the you know, molecules or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's more energetic, more internal. Totally. Yeah. Mm, this is beautiful. I think this is really gonna help a lot of people that are, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah, now, this video is going to help a lot of people because because you see uh, so many people look at these bufo experiences on youtube and and it just shows the experience okay so yeah it's scary sometimes or it's a little but this has been a, a super like informative conversation for me too and i feel like i know a bit about it because i've experienced it in, a few times but um mm -hmm. man thank y'all so much it like is there anything else that y'all is there anything else that the people need to know <laughs> um, i would just say um well one you know that when the toad calls to you it'll call to you do it for the mm -hmm. right reasons if you're not able to think of a clear intention other than like oh well i saw that you know someone on instagram did it mm -hmm. then that's not the right reason. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, if you'd like, we've talked about, if you do have a level of awareness, do your research on it too. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think it's helpful to sit with a more purgative medicine before. So I, I like the order of, of which I took apprenticeships with plants because I started with ayahuasca and I felt like I was able to release a lot. Um, yeah. but yeah. Oh, my dog's at my door <laughs> she's like let me in uh, um, <laughs> and do your research on a safe facilitator um i know i like i hate to have to like say that but there you know there are fads there are like really like, little you know self-proclaimed shamans and things like that and um just do like a quick search and say, you know, see if there's been any like cases or something brought up at least and just do it when it feels uh, right. And, you know, also take into consideration, you're probably not going to want to do this within like a day or two of, of doing like ayahuasca. That would be a no, no. Really? Um, just, yes. Just from. Yeah. Not like a week. Sometimes, sometimes two. Point, that would be very bad. So you need, plus you should be taking time to integrate ayahuasca anyway, before you're moving on to another experience. And um, yeah, I mean, that would be it, you know, be mindful of doing your research. If you're on medication, you know, take your time getting off of that. It's very important. So is, is, is the medications uh, stipulations like for ayahuasca, would that be the same for Bufo? Should you not be on medication? It's basically the same Ooh, MAOIs, SSRIs, SNRIs. Um, oh. From an illicit standpoint, it's very, very dangerous to mix amphetamines and cocaine. Um, so that just to be mindful, if there is someone who's, you know, um, seeking okay. help from an addictive standpoint. Now there are like time periods that are like, okay, we can work with this in a safe setting and then there's like absolute like no no like you cannot have used cocaine for this long so those are there's are important medical considerations it's not for everybody um so like just take all of that into account okay i'm glad i asked that because i didn't know that and that that kind of x's out the, the the person i had in my mind <laughs> oh <laughs> but, <laughs> i said it then. damn it but um okay now, okay, and, and I'm just thinking of another person that sort of that needs help, and, I'll, and I've been thinking about her with this, that, um, and it's, it's an active, a person in active addiction. So if you're on, let's say, whatever, heroin or something, and, and, and it's bad, and you can't stop doing it, you, you don't want to, like, go and do Bufo to try, to try to see, you know, if that might help or whatever. 
the I would, if someone's interested with that then they know their own limitations i would focus first on finding a very educated um practitioner um because a practitioner who is operating at that level should be able to provide you with some sort of data information. I have a really good sheet that like I referenced with like absolute contraindications, how long uh, people should be off of things. That's something that they really should know if they are practicing that at all. Um, and so that would be my advice to like get the people who <laughs> don't really know what they're doing, get that out of the way, establish a relationship, have them provide that data, um, you know, maybe even have a little consultation call, you know, Absolutely. with them. They're there to help guide. You're not there to do it for you, but they are, you know, agreeing to keep your vessel safe. So they should be more than willing to do that. Um, so that would be like the route I would suggest. Awesome. Hector? She's so yeah. called. <laughs> <Like it's perfect. laughs> she's, she's got it handled. Yes. No, she's, yeah, she knows a lot. That's, uh, that's my partner right there. And the way you articulate that's, that's good. words. It's yeah. perfect. I, I love it. She's bad yeah, no, in every way. Yeah, she <laughs> is. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, yes, no, she said it basically right. I think uh, if someone's really struggling with an active addiction, um, they should. And they think that this would help. I mean, it helped me. I would, I would go do it. Um, I mean, I would, yeah, if you need help, you need to get some help. And this is why it's called the medicine. But um yeah, you have a risk of dying anyway if you're out there doing dope and you know That's you get a hot shot, all kinds of shit. So you're you're already on the walk in the line. So you might as well do something that you know could pop more than likely help you. Yeah. Um, that but that's so you know true. that's up to that's up to the practitioner if they want to you know really get down in into that so like uh, i said there are those treatment centers to use i there will are. try to speak mm -hmm. more on that and i'll try and post that in the notes as well i'm not personally familiar i don't have an affiliation mm -hmm. i've just definitely read that um so some people right. might like you know if financially that's an option um yeah. so people might like just the the safety that you know a, a designated rehabilitation center would provide. I, so yeah i know uh, of a few you do yeah in I mexico we were probably google that you yeah know there's some in mexico yeah, there's a couple. One that I filmed a documentary at um, for Entheo Connect. That one is in Ensenada and, and also down in Sonora. There's a couple of them. Yeah, cool. And I know it's coming. Like, it's such, it's just such a, oh, my God, I just want to cry thinking about it. How how these institutions are using, are, are using these medicines, like even the psilocybin, like that, that's, that's close to my heart, too. Um, yeah, totally. And just any any of these any of these medicines, how they're gonna they're using that for mental health in you know, I don't know how that would how great that would be like being in a white room in a bed and you know, like how what the difference would be, but it's just so beautiful that the people are open in their mind. That's all. Yeah. People are it is. Yeah. Because yeah. man, this could change the world. And it is. It is. It will. Sorry. All right. Yep. Well, I love you both so very much. And I'm so yep. like honored and thank you for taking yep. your time out, Megan, again, and Hector, mm -hmm. like you're all over the place. So like, you know, well, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe you needed a little break, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. I needed, I was, yeah, I was tired. I needed to sit yeah. down for a while. <laughs> That's good. All yeah. right. Well, I love y'all. And I love you too. So, um i guess we can we can go ahead and adjourn here now <laughs> all right i love you wonderful. thank you carla thank you have a wonderful day y'all bye. Right, bye. bye